Hello, I'm Aaron Zeller with SCC, and today I'm going to show you in this video how to log in to the LME7 burner control and the LMV3 burner control using the AZL23 remote display. Now, the AZL23 is the same display used on both controls, and so the logging in process is the same in either case. The LME7 includes an onboard three digit display which gives some insight into diagnostics and the status of the LME, but does not allow for any uh, changing of parameters or logging in to set any, any parameters that you would like. The LMV3 doesn't include any such display, so the AZL is really the only insight into what's going on with the LMV3. So, let's get started. Step one is to plug it in. Now, the AZL display and both controls have an RJ11 connection on them, which looks like they're designed for a typical US phone cord. In fact, they're designed for a European phone cord, and as you can see, when I plug in the AZL with a US phone cord, the display is simply blank. No backlighting and no information. Now in some cases, the display may read COM, C-O-M-M, -M, but in either case, whether it reads COM or is blank, what that means is you're missing the European phone cord or the phone cord adapter. Now, SCC sells a little kit called the TDC Combo, which is a US phone cord and this crossover adapter. And when used together, they'll make the AZL work properly in both the LME7 and the LMV3. Now you can see the display is backlit and it reads off, which mimics what the LME7's onboard display reads. The LMV3 may often read off UPR, as shown here, if it's not yet programmed or either of the displays may read a phase or a lockout code depending on the status of the burner while it's in operation. For the purposes of this video, I'm simply going to demonstrate it on the LME7, but know that logging into the LMV3 is exactly the same. Now a burner that is running will turn off upon logging in, so be sure not to make parameter changes if the burner cannot be shut down. To log in, Press and hold the F and A buttons until the, re until the word code appears, and then let go. You should now see several underscores with the first one flashing. This is prompting you for a password. Each control has an OEM and a service level password, allowing access to different parameters. The LME7 and LMV3 come from the factory with different default passwords, and many OEMs change the password to something unique for their application. So if you need it, the password for your unit, that is, please contact the company who supplied it. For this case, we set the password as 123AB, so we'll use the plus and minus buttons to toggle between the numbers and letters and enter the password. So plus and minus, I can go to 1, hit enter to save that. I can go to the second character, enter 2 to save that, and so forth. Now when I get to the end of the numbers, it will automatically go into the alphabet. Given the limitations of this display of the seven segment LED, I don't have every letter available to me. So if you see a letter missing, don't fear. Now the last character is simply blank. If I hit enter there, when it says P-A-R-A -A for parameters and brings me into the main menu, now I know I've successfully logged in. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you'd like to learn how to change parameters in either the LMV3 or the LME7 to suit your application, look for other videos on our channel covering those topics. Thanks again and have a great day.